what's going on everybody welcome back to hero hour uh we've been gone for a little while you know i'm back with my boy vestige hero you already know the deal so um yeah we we've been uh we've been on a little bit of a hiatus you know uh due to some uh some reasons um but you know we're back and stuff a little bit of a four month break I, I, well it was four months for me i don't know how long it was for uh my man vestige over here you know, nah, his man it's, been, been hiding. it's been like what eight nine months or something like that <laughs> yeah, something like that. a whole Yo. baby has been born since this well, man no, no, has no, no, been no, no. Back, the baby bro. was like, that other video we did together that i finally put up man because that was that yeah, was youtube cool. literally impeding it from being born into this world Word. i cannot like even begin to count it was like seven eight times if i'm not mistaken uh with the latter being the correct number uh that youtube tried to like copyright me and 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 they 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 like they they, they, they were dude things, it was bro. so annoying it really was because like every time i would try to put up this video it they would just be like nah this section is copyrighted yeah. or like you have music that's like uh, just kind of iffy you know kind of sus and, and mm -hmm. a lot of these scenes that they were copywriting were critical to what the video was about because they were cutting into our conversation about the five points that we had and it was just it, it was basically yeah. like me playing tennis with them just hitting the ball back trying to make something work uh, eventually we got it up though eventually <laughs> we got it up yeah man yeah that's 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 what it's about though i mean you know you just keep trying even though it, it was like 11 7 months after you know <laughs> <laughs> we still got it done but um yeah so as you guys know the my hero academia third movie just came out world heroes yes, mission uh uh me vestige and a couple of other friends we actually just went to go see it uh and you know i i wanted i wanted to have my cosplay on i wanted to get some cosplay but I, it just didn't work out like that you know my man vestige went as his boy deku this man came yes, to the whole theater <laughs> dressed head to toe in the entire gamma uniform fire you know what i'm saying so um yes sir yeah so we're we're just gonna be going over some points on what we actually thought about the movie what we thought was good what we thought was bad what could have been done better you know things like that so uh i'm going to be a good host and let my man vestige go first so if you will take it away oh why thank you uh well what's good reaper fans it's your boy vestige hero uh i guess we'll start off with uh my topics for this movie and uh the first of which is is that i love this movie it was fire. It was fantastic. However, out of all three movies, this one had the most plot holes. And I I, I, I kind of had some issues with that. Um, we saw this movie on Saturday night. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, that would have fallen on the 30th. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 30th. Got, yeah. Awesome. So we saw this film on the 30th basically went in fresh no spoilers you know the only things we had seen were the trailers and the uh the clips that uh, ign had posted and uh aside from that we really didn't know what was going on so we went in excited we were we were lit and uh i gotta be honest with you man this movie just did not make sense at some points like heroes rising and uh two heroes they, they they made sense okay you know here's where this story takes place in time they were uh, alluded to in the anime this one it was like okay uh let's have a special episode in the middle of season five uh where uraraka and ryukyu and asui go and and stop these people from shipping trigger and then let's cut to uh the main villain of the film fleck turn at the end of the at the end of the episode <laughs> and at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the episode being like yo we didn't get our shipment <laughs> now with that being said um horikoshi did put out two uh little one shots that explained how this film started and the first one was released on shonen jump which i read and then the other one was released as the uh world heroes volume that was given out over opening weekend unfortunately we couldn't get our hands on that which sucked right because even though you read the one shot on shonen jump you get okay like these people are going out on a special mission and they've been selected by the world heroes commission to do this cool 
but then we don't know what happens afterwards and then the film starts off with um deku bakugo and shoto dropping out in the plane they're raiding um Oh, it was uh, humorizes one of humorizes base in Otheon, and you're just there like, okay, um, how how did this happen? W like, what what led up to this? And, and and that bugged me. That that really did bug me. But um, it was it, it was okay. It was okay. It was my hero film. I I gave it the pass. I gave it the excuse. It wasn't gonna take away from my experience watching the film. However, I again I do wish that there weren't as many plot holes. Uh, the beginning wasn't the only plot hole there. There were definitely some stuff going on with the villain's quirks that we didn't understand. Some cuts in between scenes that just made no sense. There was no fluidity. Uh, I sound like I'm bashing this film. I'm not. It's just like, it just didn't make sense. But it, it didn't ruin the experience at the same time. I, 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 don't, I don't know if that makes sense. But uh, that's how I felt go going into it. Um, my second, uh, point about this film was the fact that it takes place in multiple countries. <laughs> like, holy crap. That was something that was really, 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 really cool. Uh, more often than not, we're stuck in Japan. If anything, we've only gotten flashbacks to America. Um, the only destination that I could think of off the top of my head that was vastly different from Japan was I Island during the um, Two Heroes film. Uh, and that was a floating island, dude. That, that, that really was a floating island, and it wasn't a whole country. No, this time we get to see new cultures. Uh, again, Otheon, uh, which is uh, a European country, as well as Clade, um, Singapore, America. I think they showed both California and New York City, which was amazing. Um, if we get that Egyptian Egypt. guy. <laughs> EG. <laughs> you know, everybody started laughing at that guy every time yeah, he, was he was on the screen. It was funny. <laughs> a little a little side note, man. We got an Egyptian hero. He looks like a freaking uh um oh, dang. What, what's, what's it called it was, uh, again? Um, uh, 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 I want to say hologram. It's it's it's, it's kind of like a hieroglyph uh, kind of thing. Hieroglyph. Thank yeah. you, thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Hieroglyph of of, of an Egyptian emperor, and, and he looks like he's a literal piece of paper, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Just was running. zooming though. He was fast, dude. He was flying oh my, oh my god yo he was yo he was funny he was funny but um the change of scenery i it's a simple thing but it went a long way because now we get to see how heroes operate on a on a global scale uh prior to this we had never seen a world heroes commission we had only known the guys from japan now we get to see people like this uh pharaoh dude you know <laughs> kick literal butt and it, and it was really 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 cool um and, and i guess that's what the the film kind of centered on to location wise uh but more specifically i want to touch up on the otheon slash clade locations um it, it was kind of like this uh little little town type of thing at least where uh the main character other main character Rody soul lives is like okay kind of small kind of poverty -ish. um it's not as grandiose or glamorous as japan and here's where the film takes place you know not only that you know deku and Rody are forced to go on the run <clears throat> word like this they, they, they're 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 wanted fugitives and we get to see them literally like go through nature and 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 you know these remote locations we're not in the big city anymore we're not in japan and, and it was just i don't know there's something really calming about it and, and i and i liked it it was it was it was really cool um the last thing i kind of want to touch up on is this theme that reoccurred throughout the movie again lots of plot holes lots of things that didn't make sense but there was one solid cornerstone uh of this film that kind of made up for all of that and it was this theme of both surpassing your limits and never giving up and this is a theme that runs typically through a lot of uh shonen series like uh dragon ball naruto uh, the most prominent examples I can give you is how 
Goku never gives up, no matter the strong opponent, like in the Tournament of Power, where he goes up against Jiren, he goes Ultra Instinct, and even though he gets his butt kicked, he's still standing up again. Uh, or in, like, Naruto, how, you know, he doesn't let anyone get in his ninja way or his dream of becoming hokage he always gets back up like the, th the scene i'm thinking of right now is when uh he protects tsunade from like getting kicked by um uh, that 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 snake guy orochimaru um and my hero took that theme <clears throat> and they really made it their own in this film Within the universe of My Hero Academia, we're taught that if you don't have a power that's strong enough, you can't really make it out there. If you have no power at all, you can't make it out there. If you don't fit a certain social norm, you can't fit, uh, make it out there. And we've seen that in Deku. You know, we, we know that he was born quirkless and people made fun of him for being weak. We see that in Gentle Criminal, who desperately tries his best to fit into society even though he's seen as a failure because he didn't do well in school uh we see that in in la brava as well who gets depressed and and because of her stature people make fun of her um we we see that in nine and his group of people uh, the, the, the most prominent example i can think of is chimera you know first being seen as a monster and there's one more. There's one more character I'm thinking of, and and I was so happy. Uh, my small small spoiler, but uh, Melissa Shield does get referenced in this third movie, and she's looked down upon as well because uh, you know she's quirkless, not as bad as like everybody else that I've mentioned, but uh, Deku worries about her because she's powerless when he's defending her against that dude with like the the sword hands. And she literally looks at him and she's like, nah, like, yo, I saved you. You know, like, I think you mean thank you. And Dick was like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that if you don't fit a certain standard, you're kind of deemed as a failure. And that's your limit. And we see that in this film through, uh, what's his face? Fleck Turn. And... <sighs> How should I say this without giving away too many spoilers? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to word I mean, what I'm thinking point, of it's here properly. Right, bro. <laughs> like, it's, it's like the next month, you know what I'm saying? The the, the next month, everything's gonna be out here. So, um, Fleck Turn, uh, the main villain of this series, uh, is the leader of Humorize, and the whole reason why he starts it is because he's been rejected by society he was rejected by his parents by teachers by girlfriends because his quirk reflect uh turns his skin blue and he reflects anything that's uh thrown his way he can't turn off this quirk and as a result uh he's an outcast a societal outcast and yeah, again we don't really know how his quirk works too well because the film wasn't uh kind enough to explain it to us but we do see where he's coming from and despite that being the case deku straight up tells him like yo you're a failure because you gave up on yourself and because you did you limited yourself you don't know how far you could go with your quirk and throughout the rest of the film even though everybody's backed into a wall bakugo todoroki deku the other heroes who are trying to save the world from getting blown up even though they're at their limits they're still fighting anyway and they're not giving up when i tell you that this film was the most gruesome film that we have gotten out of my hero it was we saw bakugo freaking get shredded to bits stabbed in the stomach we saw Todoroki get suffocated in water we saw Deku get freaking impaled by laser after laser and this man was bleeding out of his mouth his gut everywhere he was just spilling blood everywhere and even still man he gets back up and he remembers the words of All Might, you know, who says, you know, a real hero always knows how to get out of a pinch when they're in trouble. They never give up. And even though Fleck Turn is has him on the ropes, you know, they only have like about 10, 
10 seconds or so to stop uh, these bombs from going off. Deku goes all out. Big spoilers. Big, 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 big spoilers right here. So uh, I guess you could cut if you uh, don't want to listen to this. But um, Deku goes uh, one for all 100% in um in this fight and it's just like the most glorious oh my god it was the most glorious one for all 100 percent transformation that we've seen and he just goes ballistic on freaking fleck turn his quirk is very similar to the nomu of the first season where all might fights him in the in the usj he has a regeneration quirk and he can't um essentially defeat him without overpowering the regeneration in much the same way deku just starts wailing punch after punch on fleck turns reflect and eventually he breaks it spins around in like a freaking like light jet stream but it's like so like it's a pure blue he's going super fast and then he jumps up and he finishes him with uh, uh, one, for, one for all United States of World Smash. Like this fight was so reminiscent of All Might versus Nomu. And it just goes to show how much Deku has grown and how he didn't let his limits surpass him or, or limits, uh, limit him. He surpassed his limits. Oh, my God. It was so beautiful, man. And then he, he kicks Fleck turns, butt, and even though he's used one for all at a hundred percent even though his arms are busted up for whatever reason his legs weren't he he learned how to control it he learned how to manage it and that was a limit for him for the longest time with this we now know that deku can at least partially manage one for all at a hundred percent he used it without Aries' help he used it without katsuma's help he used his quirk all on his own and he came out with his legs unscathed and we see him barreling towards the control room to turn off these bombs um and luckily you know Rody soul had already turned him off with literally milliseconds on the clock but this just goes to show man never give up on your dreams never give up on yourself even when your back is up against the wall you're bleeding out never give up because if you give up you lose all possibility of of success and achieving what you want and um oh my god it was it was just so beautiful it, it, it really was um hey, hey yeah man it was ah uh, so good it was so good <laughs> <laughs> so where where would you rank this movie uh in, in terms of all three well uh honestly speaking uh this movie at least at the end during that fight scene uh reaper can testify to this i was screaming my head off yeah, you was. I, I i was i was getting so hyped up i was like yo yo i'd never <laughs> seen deku go like that um so in terms of action I would say that this movie would be in second place. I st I still like Heroes Rising. That that ending has a very 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 special meaning to me. But in terms of story, I would definitely have to say you know kind of you know at the bottom. Uh, I would it would be, um, jeez, I think it it would be Heroes Rising first, then Two Heroes, and then World Heroes Mission because again a lot of plot holes. Uh, uh some people were saying that it was underwhelming i was reading some reviews and watching some videos after we saw the movie and uh you know i i kind of have to agree with them it kind of seemed like it was slapped together at the last minute but don't let that take away from your experience watching this film it, it was still amazing you're gonna enjoy it no matter what you know yeah. <laughs> it was it was still fire uh so yeah man it was Okay. It's amazing. That's that's all, that's all I have to say. It was yeah. it was amazing. Definitely go watch it. <laughs> no, definitely, yeah, sure. So I mean, I think my points. I only have like a couple written down here. You know, just just, just to uh, you know, so I won't lose my train of thought. So the first one that I have to uh, just say real quick is that the fights in the in the movie were a little bit better than uh, I guess some in the anime. Because I do remember this one video by I think Plot Armor, where they uh, they basically said that the fights in uh, My Hero were a little bit, I guess, average or below average, 
and they weren't as uh, I guess technical as they could be because he was kind of comparing it to Naruto and the fact that they have taijutsu and that everybody in like I guess the basic sense can throw hands with one another you know even if you're not as good as the next person in ninjutsu or genjutsu you at least can throw some hands you know and I think even in this uh, uh like quirk quirk uh what's what's the word uh uh, not infested i don't want i don't want to sound like fleck turn or anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, i guess uh in in a world where there's mostly people with a quirk um you know those that 20 percent doesn't really know how to i guess defend themselves they kind of have to de uh, depend on heroes uh yeah but you know uh, there there are there are some exceptions i guess but um with this movie i guess it was a, a bit more technical because uh i guess if you look at it even if they did use their quirks, uh, Deku, he only really, like, let, let's look at Deku, for example. Like, he, he really only used, um, I got, well, he used shoot style, which is basically a, uh, kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat type of thing. It's a kick. So, uh, his air cannon to, uh, well, I guess it's, it's not called an air cannon, but air we'll just, force. we'll just say that for, for, uh. His, his, his Delaware Air Force, uh, <laughs> his Black Air Force One attack. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, so like he would he would always use the the range attacks, and then once he figured out he couldn't work, uh, you know, it got it got to the point where it's like, okay, I have to kind of overpower him. And you know, I thought that the movie would go in a different direction than that, uh, and I'll get into that point a little bit later. But as for bakugo's fight bakugo you know he's my favorite character so i thought that he would take this fight pretty easily i didn't think there was going to be that much of a struggle but listen like vestige said this man was getting ran through like i didn't think as soon as uh the guy took trigger or whatever that was the quirk enhancing drug uh i thought that you know it, it would have been a little bit more competitive i didn't think bakugo was going to get his eye stabbed i didn't think he was gonna uh pretty much getting paled I, I think right it was it was low-key foreshadowing until the to the next season of my, oh my academia God. because that's going to be the the war yep. arc so um you know that's what i was thinking the whole time you know everybody was like oh my god he got stabbed uh but i guess it was kind of revealed that he was he was only uh cut on the sides because once we saw him from the front uh there was no impale wounds or anything like that in the center so um yeah no he he was he was definitely struggling uh i'd even go so far as to say that he got exposed like low key even though he did win he had to lose uh his gauntlets both of them and uh he had to go all out with his howitzer impact so i mean and even then he was still barely standing you know what i'm saying uh man's got shredded so Literally. i thought that that was pretty cool to see um I guess that side of Bakugo, you know, when he's on the ropes, really. The last time I could really think about uh, a fight that he was really like, uh, you know, oh my god, what am I going to do? How am I going to beat these guys? You know, type of thing. Was um, when he was kidnapped by the, the League of Villains. I've been watching or re-watching uh, the third season of My Hero Academia. And, you know, this kind of reminded me of that. But, you know, it, it, was, it was good to see him come out on top eventually. Todoroki's fight uh with w whatever that villain's uh name was I don't really know who the villain's name was I, I also don't know the name of the villain that uh was attacking Bakugo which is it's kind of, it kind of sucks I, I feel like they could have introduced the villains a little bit more um you know it would have taken a few seconds but you know it is what it is uh so when when Todoroki was fighting and he you know finished the the villain off with uh jet kindling you know I, I don't know it just didn't feel as I guess satisfying as Bakugo and Midoriya's fight. 110 percent agreed. Because it's it's kind of like there wasn't enough punches or there there weren't enough like I, I guess theatrics in it, you know. So he used flash fire freeze uh, twice, which when with the first time that he used it, I actually spoke to Vestige about this before we watched the movie, and <laughs> I thought that he would, I guess show signs of an awakened quirk or anything like that you know i thought this this movie would be like something big you know what i'm saying uh but i guess not you know i was wrong i took the l on that one <laughs> but uh yeah no so then deku went 100 percent on uh you know the in the final moments of that fight with flex turn uh i thought that that was pretty cool uh y you know it was just kind of like uh it, it, it was nice to see that he could at least get to that point in 
a fight and not be like kind of scared to use it you know i don't re recall him having broken any bones or anything like that so i i, I thought that that was a, a really cool improvement uh at least to see in a movie uh so you know that that was that was a, a really cool point uh that i had to just you know throw out there so the the next point that i had was the villain of the movie fleck turn you know his his uh i guess ideology or not ideology his reasoning for for going to do whatever he was going to do uh and i guess pretty much wipe out all the heroes right uh it, it was kind of weird to me why he hated quirk so much i mean i i know that the movie kind of explained why he uh kind of felt the way he did but i don't know why humorize their their grunts i guess you know with them having no quirks why would they kind of serve somebody who is literally uh he, he can't turn his quirk off you know what i'm saying uh he, he literally is born with that power and not only that but some of their higher ranking subordinates uh under fleck turn like the lady with the arrow hand and uh the 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 guys that uh bakugo and todoroki were fighting you know they have quirks too so it's kind of like were, were they hiding it this whole time or were they not like uh I guess kind of uh, made aware of those uh, higher ups with quirks you know because obviously flag turn has a quirk it's not like people are just born blue skinned you know what i'm saying this man looks like a smurf on drugs so <laughs> you, you kind of you kind of have to have to be uh, a little bit smarter in that sense you know you, at least you'd think so so i mean most of the most of them had no quirks and i don't understand how they can get behind somebody with a quirk who wants to destroy quirks so it's kind of like, do you want to like kill yourself too? Or I, I, I don't understand it. Right. <laughs> so that, that was uh, something that had me questioning throughout the movie. Um, so, you know, like, like I said before, I, it just, it just didn't make sense to me. Uh, I said that I would touch on this again and I, you know, I'm coming back to it right now. I don't know if I like how the villain of the movie was defeated. Uh, I feel like it could have been in a more technical way in the sense that, you know, Deku could have thought of something uh, on how to counter that ability as opposed to just, you know, punching his way through it. I did think it was really cool when he went on 100% and ended up punching his way through it. Uh, obviously, you know, like the emotions were high. So, you know, My Hero Academia fights are pretty much emotional fights. I mean, th they have a lot of, you know, obviously quirks and explosions and you know things like that theatrics but uh when it comes down to it it's really just an emotional drive uh to the fights and that's really where the pull comes in so you know the that was that was a cool aspect you know that was always there uh but i did notice like because i was thinking of how how uh deku would end up defeating the villain before he even thought about going 100 percent and I thought that uh, there was a pause in between the moment where um, Deku punched and the villain received the energy to then push back to Deku. Uh, there's like a little pause in between. So I was kind of thinking like maybe uh, there's a way that Deku can exploit that a little bit. But I guess I was wrong. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that simple. And I, I do know what you mean, Vestige, by when you say uh, it was kind of like... It was kind of slapped together um i do kind of feel like that a little bit and because this kind of makes me think back to like a, like a couple of months ago when the movie was announced or something like that and then horikoshi made a statement that uh he, he was like he didn't expect to have like another movie installment i guess he he was blessed enough to have two so i mean i guess he just kind of went all all out on the second one and you know this one wasn't that bad but obviously heroes rising uh or no, was it two here? No, Heroes Rising. The the that was the the kind of uh, creme de la creme, if you will, of uh, my hero movies, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, and then my last point, you know, Roddy Soul. I feel like his quirk could have been better. You know, uh, they had like a build up to it, and I understand that you know, uh, Pina his is his quirk. You know, she hides his true feelings, or he hides his true feelings, and then she reveals them or whatever. So all you have to do is just look at her so uh it's it was kind of i don't know the build up to it wasn't it didn't match the the kind of reveal uh i was kind of like uh you know okay i mean that's that's kind of a weird thing to build up to um but you know i understand that she essentially saved the day because you know roddy was 
uh, or what? what is his name Rody Rody was laid out on the floor he was <laughs> this man was almost dead so and yeah you know that that was pretty much it I think uh how would I rate this movie I I gave it like a seven out of ten um and obviously I put Heroes Rising or the second movie above all other uh MHA movies uh even some seasons of of the anime uh apparently season four you know a lot of people have a problem with that but you know that's a conversation for another day so uh yeah no i i, I like the movie it was a nice experience um wish we could have gotten that uh manual like you were talking about vestige uh that other people got i do remember seeing somebody actually get that uh in their uh in in the in the premiere i guess you had to be there on opening night or something like that uh i don't know well they they said it was over opening weekend uh because i watched i watched the red carpet event and i was under that impression until our other friend uh oh i i, I forget what we called him in the last video but i'll go off his name here ray the master um had told me no nah, they, they they ran out you know i was like ah that yeah, sucks no, okay <laughs> yeah no um yeah so that's gonna be it for today guys i hope you did enjoy our uh triumphant return <laughs> so um yeah uh subscribe to this channel subscribe to vestiges channel you know his link's always in the description uh and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one sub up stay safe and peace out take care guys see y'all in the next one